All right, today's video is going to be on my tailgates. No, just kidding. <laughs> it's going to be on, boom, my new purchase. As you can see, it's an Iceco fridge slash freezer. This is the VL45. And the reason I'm showing it to you like this is because I have a Silverado 1500 with an undercover cap and I found it really interesting that with the cover on this thing just barely fits in here. It's very very snug. Let me see, grab a, grab a hold of it. You can move it but it's snug. It is a snug fit in there. I'm still gonna tie it down but I just thought that was interesting. With the cover off you got about Mm, a little over a half an inch of room up there so it's a snug fit all right so I'm gonna pull this out here and then we're gonna take a look at it and she's a little heavy Okay. Back her up. Okay. So it is a little heavy. It's uh, I think just under 50 pounds. Uh, that big old compressor in there. <laughs> She's a heavy girl. So okay. So I, I picked this up. I got it directly from Iceco. And uh, we'll just go over a couple quick things and then we'll get to it. I did some initial testing of this, but uh, I got it on sale. It was $447.20, uh, and I wanted a dual zone, and these are around, they're all with tax and everything around $500, $550, you know, which is a good chunk of money, so I actually decided to pass on the dual zone because it was not a name brand. It was a Chinese model. It was a good price for it. But it only had a two-year warranty. Um, this with the C-Cop has a five-year warranty on the compressor, one year on everything else. So I thought, why gamble? I'm going to use a refrigerator most of the time, anytime. Anyways, um, the dual zone would be nice. You know, but if you're going out for really, really long trips, then I probably would have bought a bigger one anyway. So this is usually three, five-day trips here and there. Um, there's multiple ways to purchase these. If you don't want to shell out all the money at once, but you really want one of these, you can do payment plans through different companies like Affirm. PayPal just stepped up their game and went from for pay up to now you can do monthly payments, which is awesome because you can customize it to fit your budget and not get eaten alive by interest. Uh, Affirm was good in the fact that you can take it out longer, the interest charges more, but if you pay it off sooner, they give you the interest back. You know, it's deducted, so... That works out good, but the interest rate going through PayPal was quite low. That's how I chose to do it. Um, I'll probably pay it off right away, but <laughs> I just, at the time that I bought it, I'm like, I wanted extra money for my trip. So uh, that's why I purchased this. Uh, it was for a nice weekend trip, and I wanted to test it out and everything. But as luck would have it, Iceco still needs to do some work on their customer service. Their website has some errors and some problems. Um, they put up a map of the country stating they have five warehouses across the country to get your, your stuff sooner. Well, I was told, and I don't know if this is true or not, but the employee there that answered on their message said that no, they don't, most of their stuff ships out of California. They don't even have a warehouse in my state anymore. And I said, well, then why is it still up on your website? Because that's kind of misleading to people who want to purchase something and if they need it right away for a trip. So to compensate me, they offered me a $25 mug, <laughs> which I kind of chuckled about. I said, really? <laughs> I said, how about a cover? So and they agreed, and they shipped me out the cover for free. So I purchased the refrigerator. They gave me the cover for the hassle because uh, I ended up taking a week to get it, so I didn't get to test it out, actual use. Um, so anyways, here we are. All right, so before we get into the testing part of it, uh, the cover itself... It's really nice. Uh, it's Velcro. It's, it's strong Velcro. It zippers. It zippers down almost all the way flat. Only the front section kind of stands up and you just slide the fridge into it and then zip it up. 
It has venting for the fans. It has venting over here for the compressor. And then your control panel, your AC-DC, uh, your control here. You can set it high, medium, low to protect your battery. Set the temperature that you want. And then uh, maximum and minimum eco mode. Uh, the handles on mine were put on crooked. There's a couple of interesting things with this cooler, but for the price set, for the five-year warranty on the compressor, you know, I was perfectly happy. I, I really like this fridge so far. It's working out really well. And then on the back, too, not a lot to see, just another vent. You can see the cover doesn't quite fit perfectly. There's actually quite a bit of room left in there. That's because this is a dual-purpose cover. You can see there, there's a good couple inches in there. Um, but this will work for both the VL45 and the 60. There's a zipper along the bottom here which expands to make it higher for the 60. Um, because I guess that's the, the difference is they're taller. Um, but I'm fine with this extra room because I'm going to get some reflectives. Reflective? Reflectix, whatever they call it. And slide it down in here to give it a little bit more insulation. Because um, it's probably about, I'm going to guess about 3 8 for the insulation. Um, it's nice. I just liked it. It gives you a little bit of insulating properties, but it also protects it from getting scratched up. Maybe not so much dented, but scratched. And then on this side, you have a nice pocket here to put your cords in. So I have both the AC and the DC in there. Um, they'd probably fit in there if they weren't all wadded up. <laughs> they'd probably fit in better. But again, the handles were put on uh, crooked. And then the only other thing I thought was kind of interesting, and I've seen this on other people's reviews, is on the cover, you see the front. I mean, that is dead tight. And then you come around, and you can see the gap. There's a big, big wide gap here. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty good substantial gap. Let's see if I can get you in there a little better. From there to that. I don't know if it has any effect on uh, how it seals or anything. Um, I didn't have any problems during my testing, but just interesting to note. I know some people said they have unscrewed it, sat on the lid, and rescrewed it. I don't know how that would work. <laughs> Because, you know, you're not changing the whole position, but whatever. If it works for them. Cool. I'm not going to mess with it too much. It seems to be working right now. doesn't seem to have an impact on, on the fridge. So, okay. It's got these nice, uh, nice old-time latches. This thing reminds me of those really old-time coolers. It's all metal um, construction, which is nice. Iceco also makes, which I thought was kind of cool, I think it's a 250, don't quote me, I'll put it in the description, 250 watt hour battery that's magnetic. It's thin profile and it sticks to the side of your fridge. I thought that was kind of cool, but it's not a lot of run time for me. So, um, just another option though. So, I'm going to open this so I can show you, show you the inside. Flip it up. So the only way, because this thing is so tight here, the only way I can get it open, because I can't get my finger in there, is to grab the the handle there. And this isn't plugged in, so um, you can't see the nice bright shiny light, but oh my god, that light is so bright. So bright. But you can see, let me take you off the, my truck's quite high, take you off here. So you can see there, it's, wow, it's 60 degrees inside here. It's not 60 in my garage. <laughs> but this is my little temp thing, cheapy thing I got off Amazon that I use for testing for in the fridge. And then you have your small section. And then you have your larger section. And it holds quite a bit. I was surprised when I first saw this fridge. I thought, my God, this fridge is huge. And then I opened it up and I'm like, oh, it looks so small on the inside. But it holds quite a bit of stuff. This is going to be perfect for my for my uses for my camping trips and stuff. It's going to be so nice not having to deal with ice anymore. 
Um, so I'm pretty happy, pretty stoked about that. Okay, so I tested this out with my EcoFlow River Pro, which is, I believe, a 720 watt hour uh, battery. And uh, I did exactly what they what what you're not supposed to do. <laughs> well, initially I started out good. I plugged it into the AC. I, excuse me. I cooled it down. I set this for 34 degrees. It was 70 degrees in my house, and uh, it cooled down pretty quick. But then I screwed up and did what you're not supposed to. Is I put a bunch of warm drinks in here. So <laughs> don't do that. Pre-cool your stuff because it will save you a lot of time. So, what happened was, I'll show you a picture here. Okay, so here's what I put in there. Alright, so the little section I showed you holds six Lipton iced teas. This section, the large section, there was 20 bottles of ice mountain water, a couple of teas in there. Um, and it wasn't all the way full. It was only about, I'd say, half, maybe half full, maybe a little over half full. And you can see the nice bright light. It lit up that cooler really bright. I'm really impressed with the, the little light. <laughs> it did really, really well. Okay, so the interesting thing here is... Oh, the camera's like going to fall off here. Uh, the interesting thing was... When I put it in there, it took from, oh, let's see, I put the drinks in. It's 6.13 p.m. at 43 degrees at right on the outside of the cooler. I'll go over that in a minute. It took to almost 9 o'clock to cool it down. Um, the reading on the fridge is off. Now, some people, it's hit or miss with the calibration on these. Some people, it's wildly off. Other people, it's dead on. And some people, it's just... Uh, very minimal. I got lucky. Mine is minimal. It's off two degrees plus or minus. So it, it was weird though. After it went through the cooling process, got the water and the tea down to the temperature inside the cooler. Like I said, it was set at 34. I really didn't have much fluctuation. Um, it would, as soon as I got done putting the drinks and stuff and they were all cooled and everything and the temperature was stable, then I switched from the AC to the DC into my battery and I put it on the eco mode so the compressor wouldn't run as much. So the compressor seemed to come on for 12 minutes at a pop. I set it at 34. When it kicked up to 36 degrees, the compressor would come on. 12 minutes later, it would go off and it would be back down to 34. Or 36. <laughs> It was interesting. I'm like, why is it so many different temperatures? I mean, isn't the compressor supposed to kick down to bring you down to 34? But again, the little reading thing is off by plus or minus 2. So that's why I stuck my own temperature gauge in there. And it was dead on at 34 degrees inside there. So the fluctuation seems to be something in the, the reading or the calibration of the temperature sensor you know, that gives it on the display because the inside was always stable at 34 every time I checked it, but the outside was always off. It was 38 or 36 or um, at one point I think it was even 32. Um, so still, all in all, not bad. So it worked pretty well for me. So as far as I have a whole bunch of, whole bunch of readings here, I did it for uh, two days. I started on November 10th and ended on November 12th at 8.54 p.m. So I started and stopped at almost the exact same time for a 48-hour period. I still had 16% battery life left on my EcoFlow, just running strictly off the battery off DC. And there was 16% left, so that was pretty good. So with a solar panel, you could go much farther. Um, or EcoFlow also offers the extra battery pack, which is on sale right now on Amazon for the holidays. I think it's... 349 with the discount um, and they have a solar package too on discount for a hundred bucks off and I think that's like 259 so I'm debating which would be more beneficial for me should I get the solar panels so I could always top it off but on a cloudy day or rainy days you're screwed you have no way to power it then and I don't think you want to run the gas or the battery out of your truck 
So then do I go with the external battery? But again, at some point you're gonna have to charge them, but it'll probably last maybe, I wouldn't say four days, because you know, in the summer at temperatures, you're gonna suck down that battery way more than 70 degrees, you know, this testing. So I don't know, it's a toss up. Tell me what you guys think. Is it better to have the initial battery pack and solar? or two battery packs. I mean, ideally it'd be both battery packs and solar at some point because it's, it'd bring your total up to 1,440 watt hours. You could run stuff at home during an emergency. So just some food for thought. So uh, all in all, my, my thoughts, my first impressions on this through this testing period. I opened a cooler up at least three to four times each day kind of just move some stuff around like I was simulating digging for stuff like we normally do when we're out camping. Um, you know, and the temperature would jump up or whatever, but it would cool back down right away. So I like it. I, I think it's a really nice fridge. Uh, let's check out the let's check out the seal too while we're here. But yeah you can you can see the it's got a really nice uh, rubbery seal on there. It seals up really good. So it's, yeah, it's just, uh, it's got a little ice co guide on there for temperatures and stuff. Little diagram. Uh, there's your temperature one for meats and stuff. But uh, metal hinges, you can see the hinges are off a little bit as well. Uh, they were put on kind of crooked. That might be adding to why this one is up higher than this one. Um, why the back of the cover is so weird. I'm, I, I I would ask Iceco about it, but even from their pictures I've seen, I think all of their coolers are this way where the back is up higher than the front. I'm not sure why it's like that, but it's not a deal breaker for me um, at this price. This thing worked. It did amazingly well. I can't wait to test it out this summer. Especially, it's going to be in the back of my truck here underneath that undercover top, um, which is black. <laughs> and, you know, hopefully I'll be able to park in the shade and not the sun. But I'm, I'm curious, too, about uh, airflow, um, you know, because I'll, I'll probably have it in, in the middle more to keep the vents from being blocked. But being in an enclosed area like this in my truck with this cover, I'm wondering what if I'm going to have issues with that or not and I'm hoping not because I'd rather not put it in my back seat or on my floor um, I specifically bought it for the back of the truck but we'll have to see how that testing goes I think the EcoFlow River Pro, Pro did very well um, in these conditions in 90s it's going to be interesting to see how well that functions uh, so that'll be another follow-up video um, when I will test this again in different conditions out camping and stuff so you guys can see it done with Real life, you know, food and stuff that you bring and being in and out of it all the time. I, I haven't learned how to do the fancy cutting uh, cutting in film. I'm more of a photographer than I am a cinematographer. So <laughs> hopefully at some point I'll have the time to learn how to do that, displace and edit so I can put in clips and stuff. So right now I'm just going to have to rely on pictures from my phone to show you <laughs> some stuff uh, and go from there. So... Let me know what you guys think. Um, let me know your thoughts on the solar versus the extra battery pack to keep your fridge running. I'm also quite curious. A lot of overlanding people, when you see their setups, um, I mean, they have thousands and thousands, thousands of dollars in your in their rigs and gear and stuff. And I wonder if they worry about theft. I mean, I know most of the time they're with their vehicles and their equipment, but you know you got to go hiking and fishing and biking and stuff like that. And I wonder if anybody has problems with stuff like that. I'd be, be uh, interested to know. Because um, I do know some people, friends of mine, that have gone just regular, you know, camping at a campsite, you know, where there's tons and tons of people and they've set out all their stuff and gone off for the day to go do something and come back and all their cooking equipment is gone or cooler's gone, <laughs> which I find interesting, you know. Some people stay at the campsite, you know, all day, but... So I'm curious, though, about that aspect of it, too, uh, when you deck out your vehicles and stuff with all this expensive equipment. Um, I'm not a sit-at-the-campsite type of camper. You know, I like to hike and kayak and bike and, 
you know, do all kinds of stuff, and it'd be kind of a pain to have to load and unload everything. That's why I was trying to have this as a fixed deal in my truck so I wouldn't have to worry about it getting ripped off. But I am concerned, though, about the airflow uh, in here. So if anybody's got an enclosed truck and they're running the fridge, let me know how that works out for you. All right, so that's all I got. I just wanted to give you a peek at my new purchase. Um, really, really like it. Very impressed, actually, with both products. So you got kind of a little mini initial review of uh, both of the products. They did very well. And the testing will continue. So I hope this helped you out in some way. If you, if you liked the video, give it a like. Subscribe. Uh, donate to the channel. Whatever you feel. Uh, anything is appreciated. Uh, any, any helpful comments or ideas or suggestions or anything like that are always welcome. So thank you. Stay tuned. We're going to have some more stuff coming. I'm back. <laughs> See ya.